I just wanted to talk a little bit more about um, embracing the word fat. Like, so the word fat, I think most people recognize it as having a negative connotation, um, but you are embracing that word. And so tell me a little bit about your decision on that and like, what does that mean to you now? Okay. Um, so I, I, going back to the, the book, the, the project that eventually became the published book, Fat Girl, uh, while we were shopping it around, you know, we had so many images, we took it to so many publishers and we were like, well, we need a name for this project, you know? So, you know, we we're thinking, thinking, and I was like, fat girl. I, I know that those two words separately have a lot of power and, and evoke emotion in a lot of people. And together it's just like, whoa, fat girl, you know? Um, and I was picturing like it being in a bookstore, like on the, you know, the spine, like the, I just thought it would be really like, it would draw people in to mm -hmm. be like, what is this? Mm -hmm. Or what is this? Cause normally that's not something that's celebrated. Right. Yeah. So I think then is kind of when I, I, reclaim the word mm -hmm. so this must have been about like 2008 nine um because like I said we were shopping it around forever um yeah so that's that's when my my relationship to the word fat changed and yeah growing up fat is like a really bad ne ne negative connotation um word but it, to me it's just a descriptor like mm -hmm. I'm not skinny <laughs> you know I have red hair you know this is a black tablecloth um so it's um you know words only carry power if you let them and if someone wants to put me down that's whatever that's that's about them it's not about me yeah that, that's so true people's judgment of you reflects so so much more about them than yes. it does about you and 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 you're right uh, words do only have that kind of power if you allow them to. Did you ever feel like, how was it growing up? Did you feel ashamed when you grew up? And did you ever feel like when you first started in the adult industry, did you ever feel like the pressure to like lose weight and change your body? Or were you always staunchly like comfortable in your skin? No, no. Um, so no, I, I've never felt pressure in this industry to lose weight. Sometimes, you know, weight fluctuates. And sometimes mm -hmm. when I lose some weight, people are like, you're getting too skinny. <laughs> <laughs> um, also comments about other people's bodies, not cool. <laughs> but, um, no, growing up. Yeah. I, I had lots of body shame. Um, I idealized a skinny body. Um, like I think a lot of people did and still do. Um, it wasn't until I was like in my early twenties. So my weight was fluctuating all the time. In my early twenties, I was in like few really bad relationships. So I stopped eating, you know, I was, um, broke going to college, you know, so I just, I lost a lot of weight and I was, you know, perceptive to people around me, just how different everyone was treating me. And, um, at the same time I met this guy who was like, he was always happy and, I was just like, why is he so happy? Like, what's going on? So I talked to him and he was like, happiness is a choice. Like, you have to, like, choose every day to be happy. This is my philosophy back then, early 20s. Like, I, I feel I have, like, a little discussion with my 22-year-old self as, like, my 45-year-old self. But um, back then I was like, oh, shit, it's, like, in my head. So as I started to slowly gain weight, people around me were, like, freaking out. And I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to base my happiness on, um, my weight, because even when I was skinny, I was just like, damn, I still have all the same problems. I just have, my body's different, but I'm still having like these, my life didn't become instantly easier. Mm -hmm. So all these things happen concurrently. And I was just like, okay, well, I'm going to be, try to be happy with just how I am. It's crazy, right? When we, I, I, I think of the same things when I was in high school, I was like, you know, significantly lighter than I am now. And I remember thinking I was fat then <laughs> and thinking I had big thighs then. And then before I had a baby, I thought I was heavy and I was, I'm 10 pounds heavier now. And I thought I was fat then. Like it just never happy, like no matter what. <laughs> well, this diet, this is a diet culture industry. Like mm -hmm. they they make money off of feeding us lies that make us feel insecure. So, oh shit, I gotta like, what? I don't know. I don't subscribe to diet culture so i'm not sure like i have to join noom or zoom or whatever the, the name is like can i cuss 
Yes, you can. Oh, okay. And it's Noom. Noom. <laughs> you know, these fucking Noom ads are always like entering my brain. I'm like, just, oh, get the fuck out. Um, but it's, it's hard to, you know, it's advertising. It's, I feel like it's science. Like they know how to like talk to us to make mm -hmm. us feel inadequate, not just about weight, but like job, uh, where we are in life, car, watch, everything. It's, it's, they're, they're making money off of our insecurities, which they're giving us. Right. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Do you find, do you think that media is doing better now at accepting different body types? And do you see a difference in the way that mainstream media embraces body diversity versus porn? Do you think one does better than the other? Oh, great questions. Um, I think that porn embraces all different types because we know that there is someone out there who likes this. You know, I, I've never felt shamed in this, in the adult industry for my body or really anything. I feel like there's people know there's a value, um, to diversity. Um, your first question was super good, but I don't remember. And I have a bad habit of asking a couple of questions all at once and I got to stop that. <laughs> it's good. Sorry. Um, yeah. Do you think that media has, um, come oh, a yes, long way yes. from back, say in the early two thousands? Yeah. I feel like they have shifted a little bit, but I, I'm not going to credit media. I'm going to credit social media, which is really driving change for all different aspects of like humanity, not just, you know, like fatness, um, but I think that since people have the uh, ability to just self-publish, basically, you know, like on social media, diversity is, you can't stop it. And advertisers and companies know that there's val monetary value behind like showing a more diverse uh, models or whatever in their advertisements or, or targeting different types of groups. Um, I'm going to credit social media, not media. Mm. Yeah, no, you're so right. It's like once the general public, I think, was able to harness the ability to put their opinions and feelings out there, which I feel like we really saw initially with porn, because like once the Internet came along and people could search for what they wanted, as opposed to only being fed what they wanted through like magazines or whatever limited um, DVDs were at the store, um, that's when you saw like all these different tastes and niches come out and become incredibly popular. Absolutely. But by the way, what's a magazine? <laughs> <laughs> it's the internet made out of trees. <laughs> I miss magazines. <laughs> I know, right? It's uh, I, <laughs> a huge chunk of my income was from magazines <laughs> at one point, and it is no longer the case. Though I do sell um, the av I layout like every once in a while, but it's like, Man, the the price that is paid is drastically. Less. Yeah. I mean, this is you know, yeah, the evolution of media, right? Mm -hmm. I have like so many bins full of magazines that I'm in, like either like in an ad or in an article or in the on the cover. And I'm just like, what am I going to do with this? Like, I'm not going to have kids, so they're just in my storage. You should keep them because one day they're going to become incredibly valuable because they're going to be like relics, right? <laughs> yeah, relics this is like past. dusty thing. Yeah, after after I die, like just go to my storage and eBay them, I guess. <laughs> I feel like there's, a, you know, I feel like, you know how things always come full circle now with all this um, tech and us entering this new era of the metaverse and everything being digital. I think there will be an inherent value to tangible items. I think that that will become really valuable because it'll be something that people don't really get anymore. So I would hang on to those. I will. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>